we're today setting up and filming in a beautiful part of the upstate of South Carolina. And as you can see, it's early springtime. It is a cloudy day here. It's been raining a lot. And we've been getting a lot of rain, I'm telling you. We've been getting flooded in this area in the last couple of months. But if you can look, if you look, you can see some of the uh, uh, purple looking blossoms already coming out on the flowers. And if you can look closer, you can see a few of the trees budding and a few of the uh, the leaves begin to pop out already. So it's a beautiful time of the year. It's going to get even prettier as time goes on. But uh, today we're going to get started with Through the Bible. And I hope I can go all the way through the Bible, verse by verse. And today we're going to be starting the book of Romans. Now, we'll get started with our, with our Bible here. And uh, in, in the book of Romans, we'll start in chapter 1. Of course, this was written by the Apostle Paul, approximately A.D. 60. Written to the uh, <coughs> Christians who are at Rome. And so, it's a... Um, Quite a, it just covers a lot of detail, it has a lot of interesting subjects in that, and also some very important subjects in it, like justification, sanctification. It deals with the Jewish people, it deals with sinful man, it deals with uh, uh, man in his worst estate, and it gives hope for man in his worst estate. As we look at this, we'll start in verse 1, and like I've said before, we're not intending to try to expound every single word nor everything the Bible might possibly have to say. But we intend to go through the Bible as a general overview, actually dealing with each verse. Verse 1, the Bible says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated into the gospel of God. And that was so true, Paul, and he was that. And he was also a servant of Jesus Christ. Now, don't get the wrong idea. When he says servant, that's what he was. He wasn't some high church official sitting behind a, a big desk in a big office with a big salary. But he went where it was rough. He was stoned. He was uh, shipwrecked. He was beaten. Uh, Paul knew what it was to walk on the rough side of things. He had been there. He knew what it was to face a lot of opposition. Uh, he was not one of these modern day preachers who... Uh, uh, says the real sweet things and never has any opposition. No, sir. Paul preached the truth. He knew the truth and he walked with God come what may as a servant of Jesus Christ carrying his word throughout the then known world. So he was called to be an apostle and that's so true. He was. The Damascus Road experience uh, was a great. And then he says also separate unto the gospel of God. And that is so true that he was. His life was dedicated unto the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, not into just uh, <clears throat> all kinds of uh, good deeds, uh, not of humanities, uh, but he was separated into the gospel of God, the news of God. That word gospel refers to news, good news. And he was saying that God has sent some good news into this world. And he said, that's what I'm giving my time for and my life unto. Then he goes on to say in verse 2, which, and these are in parentheses, he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. <clears throat> yes, the gospel of God had been prophesied. The news of a Savior uh, had been earlier prophesied. You can go all the way back to the book of Genesis in chapter 3 and uh, verse 15. You'll find the first mention of a Savior coming into this world. Uh, right after the sin of Adam, uh, God made promise. Uh, that he would come and he had bruised the serpent's head. The serpent would bruise his heel, but he would bruise his head. And though it was. And so he did promise this. And we could go all the way through the scriptures uh, and talking about the times that God promised that he would send his son into this world. And then, verse 3, he goes on to say, concern his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. And he was every bit of that. And uh, you notice in the Bible we have genealogies within it. And uh, you can trace those genealogies from Christ all the way back to Adam. And you can see his relationship to Adam. He was God, come to this world, born of a woman, but yet all God and yet all man. Uh, according to the flesh, the son of David, the seed of David, according to the flesh. And that was Jesus Christ. And then notice in verse 4 and declared to be the Son of God with power, and of course, according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. 
There's one thing that really separates Jesus Christ from any other religious teacher. He was not just a religious teacher. He taught about God. Yes, he did. But don't confuse Jesus Christ with the religion. Don't confuse him with religious teachers. He was way above and beyond that. Uh, he was declared to be the Son of God and who he said he was because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the Bible is very clear about Jesus Christ who was resurrected. And that sets him apart above and beyond any other religious teacher. I don't care who you might be listening to today, but if they are dead and buried, I wouldn't pay them too much mind. I just wouldn't listen to them. But this man, Jesus Christ, uh, rose from the dead by the spirit of holiness, by the power of God. He rose again from the dead. He said he had power to take his life and lay it down. He had power to pick it up again. He did that very thing. Well, we could talk about his resurrection for a long time, but we'll move on just for time's sake through the Bible. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name's sake. Well, he's talking here about the grace, that's the gift of God, not just in salvation and apostleship. I think that is for his work that he is doing among the nations in his day. He said, we have received grace and apostleship to be able to do what we are doing, what he is doing. And uh, so it is. When God calls a man, he equips a man, he sends him, he supplies the need and grace that he needs. We read about the gifts that God gives uh, over in the other epistles. He gives gifts unto men. And as he led captivity on high, uh, he gave gifts unto men. Some apostles, some pastors, some teachers, some evangelists, right on down the line. Well, right here he's talking about this grace. Uh, to the obedience of faith among all nations. Among whom, verse 6, are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. Now these people in Rome who had accepted Jesus Christ, then they become the called of Jesus Christ. Uh, they know him and they are then become his called and they know him they're the call to jesus christ verse 7 to all that be in rome beloved of god called again to be saints notice this verse 6 you have the word called of jesus christ notice in verse 7 you have the word called to be saints well we're both you're called to jesus christ and you're called to be saints I know you couldn't tell that some people are actually saints, but the Bible says in this verse that we are called to be saints. Sometimes you wonder, what did this guy get called to be when you see some of these people, you know, who name the name of Christ and, and they don't live like it. So uh, what do you call them? I don't know. I call them hypocrites. But nonetheless, um, that's what we are called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's the introduction, a part of it. He goes on with the introduction now for about uh, seven more verses. But that's the first part of Paul's introduction. He had long introductions and sometimes long salutation, salutations in these epistles. And I'm reading and teaching out of the King James Version. This is the Schofield a reference edition. You can't beat it. You won't find any other Bible any better. And yes, you can understand it. All you need at times is the Webster's Dictionary or maybe a stronger Young's Concordance, and you can understand this Bible right here. One thing I like about the King James Bible is that there's no copyright in it. If you want to reproduce it, you can reproduce it. You don't have to worry about a copyright or paying royalties to some other company or individual. And uh, you just cannot improve on this Bible. It is the closest to the original uh, that there is, without any doubt. That's another lesson. But today in verse 8, First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the world. So Paul's saying, I've heard about your faith. I realize that you have accepted Jesus Christ and that you're real. You're real. You know, did you realize in these days that the Romans would put people to death uh, for not bowing to the emperor as God? Oh, yes. Many times they'd feed them to lions. Many times they'd be beheaded, sometimes nailed to crosses, and sometimes uh, forced to fight with gladiators of whom they'd stand no chance. So it was a very, very uh, serious thing to announce their faith in Jesus Christ. And it ought to be serious. We ought to be serious about our faith. So they spoken of throughout the whole world. Well, look on verse 9. He says, For God is my witness, and my servant, my spirit, and the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. 
That should have been a great encouragement to those at Rome to know that the Apostle Paul was actually praying for them and making mention of them in his prayers. He says, mention of you always in my prayers. And that was a great blessing. Could you imagine getting a letter from Apostle Paul him saying, I'm praying for you always? Uh, we're not going to get that letter. But uh, we may get a letter from somebody else and they say, I am praying for you. I'm praying for you. I pray for you all the time. And that can be a great blessing to us, can't it not? And a great encouragement. And you know, God hears prayers, and God answers prayers, and so we should always be glad. And you know, as well, it would be great if we could also relate that same message to other people and say, I'm praying for you, and I've got you on my mind, and I'm praying for you. It's always a blessing to me when I have troubles or trials to hear that somebody is praying for me. And I'm sure this was a great blessing to the people at Rome as well. Verse 10, he goes on about this prayer. Uh, you notice here the uh, uh, the punctuation at the end of verse 9. Uh, making requests. This is, has to do with his, with his prayer. If by any means, now at length, in this time soon, I might, at now at length, he's meaning the foreseeable future, I believe is what he means by the word now at length. Uh, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. He said, I'm asking God for this. Uh, that soon, in the foreseeable future, that I can come and I can have a prosperous visit among you. Well, now that's part of his prayer, but now what do you think he wants to uh, do when he gets there? We'll look at verse 10, uh, verse 11. Uh, For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end. You may be established. But Paul says, I want to come and share what I have with you. And I want you to be a stronger Christian. I want you to be a firm and planted in the Word of God and your faith of Jesus Christ. Well, that is great. That is great. It's his purpose and one to come. He could have some fruit among them as well. Oh, I tell you what, this, this man Paul, uh, he is like a superman among all the Bible men. Uh, he, he, just, he just really had everything together. If you look now, in verse 11, he goes on to say, he said, For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. Verse 12, That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. He says, It'll be a blessing. It'll be a comfort to me if I can come see you and feel and enjoy uh, the fellowship and the mutual faith that we have in common. And when you get around people who are true believers, you know what I'm talking about. You will know what I'm talking about if you become a believer and you're not a believer. You'll get around someone who is a believer and that mutual faith will be a comfort unto you. It'll be a good feeling unto you and you'll be blessed by that. Many times on the job sites, <clears throat> and sometimes I do construction work, sometimes it's like there's no saints or no Christians around. But then every once in a while uh, there'll be somebody who's a Christian who will bless me. And they'll bless me with their spirit and they'll bless me with the words. And they'll bless me by what they have to say. And, and it's a comfort to me. It's a help to me as I'm out working. And sometimes, like I said, the atmosphere sometimes is just not good. Sometimes it's rough. Sometimes it's hard. And there may be even times where I'm discouraged with life. But then here comes some Christian whom I don't even know. I'm thinking about one guy that showed up in a dump, uh, uh, in a dump truck one day. And before he left, he and I were both rejoicing in the Lord and giving thanks unto God. Well, we'll have to stop today's lesson at this verse, the end of chapter, uh, 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 verse 12, chapter 1. Before I go, I want to uh, always make sure you have an invitation to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can see the beauty of the world, but if you can see what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, it would be better than anything you've ever looked at. If you're not saved and you do not know Jesus Christ, confess yourself as a sinner. Believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to save you and your, your soul from hell. Not of works. You can't work your way in. But by believing in He who did the work, that is Jesus Christ. I believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ for a man, the salvation of man's soul. If you've never done that, ask Him into your heart today and you'll find He will receive you. Thank you, my friends, till we meet again.